Uh, yeah. Now, I know the box looks as though it was designed by a fourth grader, but putting that aside, this is the Scythe Big Shuriken 2 Revision B air cooler. Ultra low profile air cooler, meaning it spans only 58 millimeters in height, which means it will fit perfectly, I mean literally perfectly, inside the Fractal Design Node 202, which is where this will end up eventually in a separate video. Stay tuned for that. But we're going to compare uh, this, cool this cooler's uh, thermal capacity to other air coolers that, I'll admit, aren't the same form factor, right? They're not as low profile, uh, but nonetheless, for 40 bucks and being that it fits in uh, ITX cases I want to see what this thing packs in the box for 40 US dollars which by the way is what you can buy this for if you live in the US check out my link down below tied to my Amazon affiliate account if you live anywhere else in the world you can still click on the link and it should take you to your respective Amazon uh, website for your country this again at 40 bucks doesn't look too appealing on paper especially on the box I mean come on let's take What's up with all those words? But anyway, it's a pretty beefy air cooler for what it is, for how thin it is. And uh, I think it, it offers an interesting value proposition nonetheless. So we're gonna get started testing this thing right now. So a few things the Big Shuriken 2 has that make it stand out from its competition. The first thing you'll notice out of the box is this thing's pretty beefy. Uh, it's actually quite uh, heavy for what it is, for its size, and that's thanks in large part to these five copper heat pipes here. These look to be about six mil thick copper heat pipes, uh, and those span from a nickel-plated base. Mine didn't have any scratches for the most part on it, which was a good thing. Uh, and then these pipes span up to it's almost like a double layered aluminum uh, fin array and above the aluminum fin array you have a super thin ultra low profile 120 mil fan we're talking maybe a centimeter and a half worth of uh, thickness here for this fan so I'm, I'm more or less concerned about airflow because these fins aren't able to displace a lot of air uh, just because of how thin everything is but apart from that I mean if you're if you're worried about clearance this is the kind of cooler you, you should consider um, when you're building a small form factor PC if you're not going to liquid cool you're probably going to be compromising just a bit in terms of how loud your system will be the slim fan is held on by two wire brackets on either side pretty easy to remove though you probably won't have to unless you want to strap a thicker fan onto here for whatever reason uh, because you will not be able to access the mounting points beneath this aluminum fin array uh, from the top. There, there are no cutouts for that, which means that installation is going to be a major pain. Now our cooling test bench utilizes an X99 CPU, which means that we don't have a backplate per se. Everything's handled on the front side of the motherboard and this cooler utilizes two brackets, one on each side secured by two screws a piece. And then we do have four screws that are essentially thumb screws that screw into the socket around the CPU. These two brackets here aren't difficult to secure. You're going to need something like a Phillips head screwdriver that's not included in the box, but that's probably the only tool you'll need overall uh, because this small thin wrench is included to mount the cooler directly to the socket, at least for x99 platforms. And this is where it gets extremely difficult. So if you have your motherboard already installed in your case, then you, you should probably take it back out and try to secure this cooler that way uh, because the case itself is gonna impede your ability to get underneath that cooler. You also want to remove your RAM modules if possible because those again are gonna impede your ability to uh, get in there with that wrench and tighten the cooler down. All in all, it took me about 20 minutes to secure and half that time was me just fiddling with it trying to reach those mounting points and secure them as much as possible. Uh, now, cooling performance, not all that bad. I was actually pretty impressed for, again, the size and the cost of this unit, it looks pretty darn good in any system, although it is a little low profile, right? Especially for full ATX uh, build. Uh, but the cooling capacity, again, not too shabby. Keep in mind, all of these coolers are significantly larger than the Big Shuriken 2, and that would explain the temperature delta. I'd still like to point out, though, that cooling a 5820K is no small task, and despite this cooler being rather small, it does a decent job keeping temps in check. And while maintaining these temperatures, the system wasn't too loud either, which I expected to be the one big compromise with the Big Shuriken 2. I thought, okay, we're a really thin fan, and the cooler itself isn't too large, so it's probably going to get pretty loud. This fan does have a rated RPM of up to 2000. It's PWM controlled. Uh, the wire is braided, which is really nice. So they didn't cheap out anywhere you would expect them to with a $40 cooler from a place that I probably can't pronounce. But ultimately, things didn't get too loud. We managed to stay under 40 decibels, and that's actually something that is listed on the box around 30, 60 
dB is what they advertise, and sure enough, 37 dB, I'd call that within the margin of error, not too bad at all. All of these, by the way, were tested with the stock fan curve, so everything should scale equivalently. And I do want to point out that I also used each cooler's respective thermal compound. The one in the Scythe cooler box was not the best looking compound. It was a little liquidy on the surface and then it got pretty chunky underneath. So that's when you know you don't have the highest grade thermal compound. But I like to use individual paste because it encourages manufacturers in these tests in particular to throw the best thermal compounds they can into their boxes so that the consumer gets the lowest temperatures. If we, you know, completely neutralize this and just use like, you know, conduct a knot, uh, then no cooler manufacturer is going to want to put good thermal compound in their boxes. And we don't want that, right? We want the consumer to just be content with what is in the box because it's good enough. And this cooler thermal compound is just not good enough. Now at this point, you might be weighing the pros and cons of a cooler like this and trying to justify the $40 price tag. I think for $40, it does a great job cooling, I mean, heck, a 5820K, it's gonna do a great job cooling any consumer grade Intel CPU or AMD CPU for that matter. Uh, and it also stays relatively quiet when doing so. So for 40 bucks, it's a pretty sweet bargain. But there are two other questions you should ask yourself before deciding to buy this cooler. The first is what chipset you're on, and the second is what RAM modules you plan on using. To answer the first question, this cooler will only disappoint one fan base, and that is AMD's, because this cooler does not have native AM4 chipset support which means that you're not gonna be able to mount this cooler to anything that has the word Ryzen in it basically. And I understand that's a huge chunk of the CPU consumer space out there. If you have a Ryzen CPU, you're gonna have to jimmy rig this cooler. And even then you're probably not gonna have the, the easiest time doing that because of the way the cooler is designed. So I recommend AMD users stay away from this. And if you're gonna build an ITX rig, you're still gonna have trouble mounting the cooler, but at least you can do that with Intel CPUs. I hate recommending a, a cooler that's only compatible one way, right? For modern chips but that's just how it's gonna be because this cooler is so old. I'm pretty sure it's been out for five or six years now. As to the second question, this will depend again on the RAM kit that you're looking at. Uh, I would say that if you're gonna go for anything that has like a very conservative heat sink just above the PCB, uh, then it'll probably fit. I use these G-Skill RAM modules and they're actually pretty, you know, flary on top. Uh, the PCB is a considerable distance underneath the tops of these heat sinks and things were still perfectly fine underneath. I had no clearance issues at all. In fact, I had a, a few more millimeters to give. So uh, actually pretty impressive for how short the cooler is height-wise. It's only 58 millimeters tall. RAM modules, you're probably not gonna have too big a problem with if the heat sinks don't uh, surpass the height of the PCB itself by very much. So my verdict on the Big Shuriken 2 is twofold. It depends on if you're an AMD Ryzen user or if you're some other CPU user. If you have AMD Ryzen CPUs at your disposal, this cooler is not gonna be an option, at least how it is now because it doesn't have native AM4 support. But if you're using any other chipset out there that is listed on the box, let's see, LGA 775, 1150X, 1366, 2011, 2011 V3, and then AM2 all the way up to AM3 Plus and FM2 Plus, you can use this cooler, congratulations. And also, obviously, if you're building in an ultra low profile case, something like the Node 202, this cooler will be perfect for you. I mean, literally perfect. It's almost like this cooler was made for the Node 202. Stay tuned for that build if it's not already listed in the card above. I do wanna hear from you guys in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this cooler and some of its competitors. List those as well. Again, this video is not sponsored. I don't care what you list or if you hate on this cooler, it's not really a big deal. Reviews on this channel will never be sponsored, by the way, so don't worry about that. I'm just gonna give you my honest opinions on these things. Uh, whether I get it from a company for free or not, you know, if a company is willing to ditch me over one negative review, I don't want to work with that company anyway. So don't worry about whether I bought it or if I got it for free. That's my rule of thumb. I don't like working with companies that don't like working with me. What you can also do if you like this video is give this one a thumbs up. I appreciate that. You can also click the red subscribe button if you haven't already in that bell notification icon so you get notified when videos like these go live. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.